on a several assumption, uh, which is the assumption that economic ideas matter. Uh, economic ideas are part of the way the world is and transformed, mainly through the design and implementation of public policies. Although this central assumption, the line of argumentation follow is not about the affirmative thesis, or at least it only touch of affirmative thesis in a very broad sense. But it is about the idea of purity, that is, the idea that economic, economic ideas are institutionalized in the sense that they are embedded in law and policy recommendations, programs, bureaucracies, organization, decision making, uh, support tools. So it is, this is a complex process involving ideas, theories, authors, organizations, and also the way, uh, for instance, authors circulate across different spheres. Uh, my, my invitation with this presentation is not to, uh, to offer uh, closed uh, uh, answers, but to offer a, a roadmap, a roadmap that uh, starts from <coughs> some questions, some research questions, that uh, uh, goes back to another research project uh, with the name OpenEC, and uh, uh, in order to present some conclusions and also to disclose uh, our uh, theoretical background and after that, I uh, come back again to some research questions about uh, this topic of the international circulation of, uh, of ideas. So, uh, the fact that periods of economic turmoil, of crisis, have given rise uh, Crisis and paradigm shifts within the chain of economics was a central idea of our uh, research. Uh, and a central question was what does happen now in the context of the crisis of 2007 2008? So, at a very broad level, we start by questioning the influence of economic ideas on policy decision making. So this kind of, of questions, why economic ideas matter, uh, why, uh, why economic ideas influence uh, policy making, uh, how to explain that there are questions which are, uh, there are ideas which are uh, more persuasive in the way they constrain the perceptions of decision makers uh, in what relates their own alternatives and influence uh, decision making, uh, how to perceive the relationships between different domains, the domain of the academia and also public sphere where uh, we have uh, uh, economists as, as uh, advisors, for instance, uh, journalists, uh, how to explain the, uh, the process of, of change from one certain economic paradigm from one certain economic theoretical uh, uh, insights from and practice also to another. Are economic ideas to move beyond more ideas? So this is our uh, first set of questions which are very, very broad. This very broad uh, uh, questions was became sorry to be addressed in the context of an exploratory project, an exploratory research project named Open Economics and the Real World, the case of the Portuguese uh, which analyzed the case of the adjustment program of the Troika in Portugal between 2011 and 2004. 
uh, this research was developed uh, also by Jose Maria Cartacalda, which is not here now, uh, uh, João Ramos de Almeida, and, and Paul. So this program, the adjustment, the Portuguese adjustment program, was uh, a clear example of a policy package designed by experts, in particular IMF economists, open theoretical foundations, which are referred in the IMF papers as the consensus views, that is the common or widespread views of economists and policy makers. The program was meant to achieve a set of objectives and the implementation of the program was closely monitored by the Trump. By the Trump. However, in the course of the program's implementation, events occurred which came as surprises. So, our research questions became how did the INEF cope deal with such surprising events? Such was our focus. So, our case study um, addressed directly not the resilience or the immunity of economics to real world events, but rather the response of economics and economists to unexpected consequences, surprise, of public package, which are devised by economic experts, open economic training operations. Uh, the research uh, uh, project was also meant to analyze the role played by the economic, economic journalists during the Portuguese adjustment program. It built on the idea also that uh, economic media and journalists are not mere spectators and reporters, but important actors <coughs> during economic crisis, in that they provide a certain kind of narratives that is causal stories, interpretative frameworks that diagnose and explain crises and promote an idea about a particular set of actions to resolve the crisis. So, uh, about, uh, so this research project developed two case studies. About the case study on how the INEF cope with surprise, clearly we did not expect to find did not find a simple and straightforward relation between surprise and revision. The problem is clearly addressed in the following quotation. So, this is Olivier Bouchard in 2015, and the problem was posed uh, in these terms. Uh, the crisis was a traumatic event during which we all had to question many Sherry's beliefs. Uh, it would uh, have been intellectually irresponsible and politically unwise to pretend that the crisis did not change our views. Uh, but uh, something is problematic for Blanchard. Uh, it is how to indicate a change of views without triggering headlines. Uh, of mistakes, INF errors, and so on. Uh, and uh, at the same time, there are problems related with the institutional architecture. So uh, we have to treat countries in a consistent way. Uh, the fund must, must have a corpus of beliefs, uh, and this corpus is not easily changed. So the point is that uh, ideas do not only need to they need to be sold to the rest of, of, the, of the building itself. And what is interesting is that one year later, now uh, the now uh, chief economist of the IMEF respond in a slightly different way. Uh, and uh, he says, I will describe the process, the process of revision of certain economic beliefs of the IMF economists, not as a, a, a revolution, but as evolution. So, uh, that process, global financial crisis, 
has not fundamentally changed the core of our approach, which is based on open and competitive markets, robust macro policy frameworks, financial stability, and strong institutions. But it adds important insights about how best we achieve those results in a sustainable, sustainable uh, uh,
because Kuhn's relevant actors are scientists and their communities. Uh, the concept of epistemic community does not refer only to economists as academics. It refers to a multitude of actors, uh, to political actors, uh, organizations such as the IMF, central banks. And IMF as a political actor, although we may recognize that the institution may be interested in justifying policies with economic scientific partners, it is, it is not committed to, uh, uh, to the ethos of, of science. Another important point uh, is that economic ideas and practices circulating at, at an international level, they are, uh, when they are assimilated, uh, translated, appropriated at a national level, they are institutionalized. That is, they are embedded in policy package, administrative procedures, bureaucracies. For instance, and the same, uh, uh, the same may apply also when we are talking about the idea. Ideas are embedded in an institutional architecture. And this may help, this idea of that ideas are institutionalized may help us understand the pet dependency nature of change in public policy, which is an important topic of uh, 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 literature from international political economies, which are uh, concerned with institutional variation and, and change. And where are we now? How these topics, this first research question, this theoretical background, are connected with the study of the process of circulation and the appropriation of economic ideas and practices at an international level. I attempt my proposal is to explore this possibility of connection by advancing some additional questions. In first place, which is the object of circulation? If, of, which is the object of diffusion at an international level? Ideas, theories, or policy recommendations ground on certain economic theoretical assumptions? Or both? The question is important because the process and dynamics of circulation and appropriation may differ according to what is diffused. Second, uh, and following a question already addressed by Foucault, does the fact of diffusion of certain economic ideas, that is, its reproducibility in nature, being part of what makes them as legitimate and hegemonic? Does the fact of diffusion of circulation participate in the construction of what is diffused in itself? Third, Economic and policy ideas may apply very different in different places. The idea was, was already mentioned yesterday. So economic and policy ideas diffuse international, translate into national practice in certain ways, which may fit or otherwise conflict struggle with providing political institution, national political institution. And in the last place, who are domestic interlocutors. They are always sympathetic domestic uh, interlocutors. Where do they come from? What explains their intellectual resonance with certain economic ideas and practices? Uh, just uh, 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 a set of conclusions about the previous research project, the OpenEC. So uh, our case study about uh, our IMF code, as a big surprise, was developed through an analysis of the documentation produced by the IMF in relation to the Profits Adjustment Program, namely the original Moon of Understanding and the 11 reports of the trimestral reviews uh, which were uh, made. And uh, we, uh, our focus was uh, to identify set of objects, so the problem at, at improving or no, improving external competitive yes and no, improving competitive yes and yes, centralized financial system. And also our focus was to disclose the theoretical underpinnings of the product uh, of the adjustment problem. 
the idea of internal devaluation and the idea that fiscal consolidation could be expansionary are central in the program. And uh, uh, we also aim to characterize the device resort by the IMEF uh, to deal with surprise. And uh, there are some positive surprise, but there are a lot a set of very important negative surprise. On the positive side, the rapid pace and the extent of the external adjustment. But on the negative side, we have a lot of, of, of events, the sudden rise of unemployment, the reception, which was deeper than previous and uh, and the negative effect of recession on fiscal consolidation, the trajectory of, of public and external debt, the depletion of the capital stock, and the incapacity to sh shift the driver of growth from internal to external demand. Uh, so, in order to protect the fund's reputation, to preserve its queries, uh, uh, IAEA uh, experts use a set of rhetorical devices aimed at deflating falsification or at least preserving the core of the IMEF uh, approach. And we identify, and uh, here we have as examples, so we identify and define two types of rhetorical devices, ex ante and ex post rhetorical devices. Ex ante rhetorical devices are deployed preventively before the occurrence of the event and mobilized later on if need to account for deviations. So examples, and here uh, uh, you have uh, some examples for uh, came from the reports. Uh, they involve mechanisms as such, downside risks, which may be relate, relate to external developments, as for instance, the ozone, internal problems of implementation or weak program ownership, for instance, lack of concordance from Copan or the Constitutional Court or Copan constant, and genuine uncertainties that they have to be taken into account. Ex post rhetorical device have a, a role of accommodation. So they are activated after the occurrence of the disturbing event or development. And they involve mechanisms such as materialization of risks which was previous and that that is the case of lack of public concept and social and political resistance, but also the role of the constitutional court. Uh, implementation problems, the more often mentioned uh, was the government failure to deliver the fiscal devaluation which was agreed open. Also problems with the implementation of the currency permits. And, and concealment, that is, there are two types of situations, manipulation of data or of information, which includes, for instance, moving targets. The idea is that uh, consisting in comparing fig figures, for instance, in this case, nominal GDP in each time period, not with the target initial set up in the moment of understanding, but with the target as a man in a subsequent period, so uh, we have a much more smooth evolution uh, uh, in this case. And some controversies relate with modified conventions of codification, uh, so that the observed figure fits or may approach the target. So, <coughs> At the end, we may say that at the level of IADF policy, the main effort was one of preserving the core of its approach. But the reputation of the IMEF also depends on its capacity uh, to give rise to a process of uh, the revision of the US. So, to what extent have crisis and fund experience uh, with the adjustment problem triggered a junior process of the revision? So, we have uh, this example, which came from an IMF policy paper published in September of 2013, and devoted to reassess fiscal policy. And this paper signaled significant changes. 
so the paper was organized in terms of uh, identifying the great crisis consensus view of the idea. And uh, all these previous beliefs are reassessed, and we may, we may uh, see that here several theoretical foundations of the adjustment problem, the idea of internal knowledge, the idea of uh, an expansionary fiscal policy, uh, were clearly challenged. Uh, again, in 2015, an IMF paper provided an assessment of the fund support programs all over the world, not just in the Eurozone, uh, and undertaken during the global financial crisis, and again we have a very critical appraisal concerning some of the fundamental, fundamental theoretical underpinnings of the adjustment problems. Uh, namely, again, the ideas of internal regulations, the ideas of fiscal uh, consolidations, the role of uh, a process of, of, uh, of uh, trying to solve Debt by restricting the debt. So, in many points. Summing up, we have this kind of inconsistency of inquiries. So, we have uh, an apparent inconsistency between what is INEF research and uh, the idea that at the level of research we have the economists have perhaps more autonomy to do his own work and IABF policy. So, how to deal with this apparent inconsistency? Uh, first, by introducing qualification. So, if uh, we uh, uh, read again uh, this kind of report, this reassessment report about fiscal policy, and we see that there are a lot of qualifications which are meant to give scope, to give space to conservation policy in some special cases. So the idea that there are situations, for example, in the case of Portugal, there, there, there is no alternative than uh, a, a policy of fiscal consolidation of internal information. And here we have some examples. Secondly, we may uh, uh, advance the idea that this apparent inconsistency is not uh, an inconsistency at all. So the idea that uh, probably the IAEF cultivates an internal division of labor between the research department and the staff, the executive board, and we may uh, question about the role of, the, of this division of labor internal to the IF, the IMF. So this idea of firewall. May this internal division of <coughs> labor be a condition of stability, of uh, uh, credibility of the, the, the fund in itself? Uh, the other case study developed in the realm of the open egg was uh, a case study about the role played uh, by economic journalists during the adjustment process. And in this case, uh, our research analyzed the content of the tutorials of six Portuguese economic journalists between January of 2010 and July of 2014. These economic journalists were selected not only because of their salience of their opinions in, in the press, but also for their frequent appearance on TV on the role of economic experts. And the main conclusion was that despite some individual variations, their role was one of building public concept. So the main narrative was a narrative which attributes the crisis to overspending and debt, so obfuscating another uh, causal stories and other uh, alternatives. That blames individuals, the families, for instance, for their own situation and dismiss any alternative uh, uh, solution. So, uh, and the overall period was uh, uh, divided in a 
certain phases which are in accordance to uh, important events and for each phase we uh, identify some taglines uh, around and the, the, the narrative of this journalist uh, journalist was uh, uh, were elaborate around this table. So, last, and again, we are, uh, the question is, where are we now, and uh, how this research uh, uh, in, made in the open air, uh, which is clear influenced by the, this topic of economic ideas and matter, and the relations between situations of crisis and uh, economic ideas and policy, how this may contribute to a study which, uh, to a study that now aims at understanding the process of circulation and appropriation of economic ideas and practice at an international level. Uh, so my proposal was now uh, to look uh, on how certain ideas and practices were assimilated and appropriated by the Portuguese Central Bank in a particular context, in the context of financialization of the Portuguese economy since the 1980s. So there are important differences. We may expect now less conditionality uh, than it happens. <coughs> more innovation. Uh, although not a moment of crisis in itself as the financial crisis of 2007-2008, it corresponds to a period of a deep institutional transformation of the Portuguese economy, brought by the European uh, uh, process of integration and also by financialization. And there are uh, a lot of research questions which are important to be uh, 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 For instance, how to disclose the main theoretical underpinnings, the core beliefs of the Portuguese Central Bank So in the case of the Portuguese adjustment problems, we look at the level of understanding and the reports, the eleven reports of the IMF. Uh, how to approach now uh, is aimed to disclose a central core of the use in the case of the Portuguese Who are the economists of the, of the Portuguese Central Bank? Where were they trained? Uh, which are the main characteristics of the economic research made within the Portuguese Central Bank? Uh, in the case of INF, we see that there is a kind of internal visual plan between the research department and the uh, it is, is, it, is it possible to see the same kind of innovation in, in, in the context of the Portuguese Central Bank? Uh, our ideas about financial regulation, uh, which are clear about uh, within the influence of international organization, as for instance, the cause of the Commission. Uh, fit with institutional architecture of the Portuguese financial state. All these ideas are institutionalized in the past of the Portuguese state. So these are a set of, of questions that I propose to advance in order to see how these two research projects connect.